Gostaria de cumprimentar os irmãos, I'd like to greet the brethren, que those who are participating with us here, the brethren from the Church of Houston, Church of Pompano and Port St. Lucie, and also the ones who watch us through YouTube with the peace of the Lord Jesus. We're going to open the word of the Lord in the Gospel of Matthew. We're going to read a couple of verses from chapter 25. This is a text that we all know, chapter 25, from verse, from verse 4. We're going to read from verse 4. We're going to skip a couple of verses. We're going to read 4, 6, all the way to the 8, and then the last verse, uh, verse 13. Matthew, chapter 25, from verse 4. Thus, thus said the word of the Lord, verse 4 says, But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps, verse 6, And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of our oil, for our lamps are going out. Now verse 13 says the following. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Again, watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Let us close our eyes and pray. Lord, we thank you already for the first part of the service, for the praises, the prayers, the presence of the Holy Spirit, bringing joy to our hearts. And now we ask that your word may complete the blessing in each one of the lives who are here participating. We ask that you may speak and operate in a great way through your word. Lord, we ask and already thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, my brethren, as we have mentioned, it is a well-known text of from every one of us. We have already studied about this topic very recently, and this text speaks of a, a moment in which that there were two groups, five wise and five and five who were foolish. And what is interesting is that that group, those groups, they have the th same things. They lived in the same fellowship. They were together. But there was a moment where the groom arrives and then there, were, there was a separation. It was a moment of definition. It was a moment of decision in which there is a separation of those two groups. But what do the Lord has for us tonight? Let, we don't need to get into too many details about this story, but what do the, the Lord has for us tonight? My brethren, many out there, like the Lord has already shown tonight, many out there they serve the Lord, or rather they say that they serve the Lord, they are Christians, they participate in the same fellowship, they are in the church, but there is a moment the moment in which we are living, which is a moment where you may have to make a definition in your spiritual life. We all know the moment in which we are, this moment of apprehension in the world, the moment of apprehension that is around us, whether it is at work, on our daily lives, or even going, at least, even going to the supermarket. We see the difference in the apprehension and the uncertainty that it brings. But tonight, the Lord wants to give us a blessing of have a definition in your lives. The Lord has shown in the spiritual gift that this woman, there is a woman here that has a lamp, that has a weak light. She's a Christian. But the presence of the Holy Spirit is no longer the same. And my brethren, the turn versions, the way for them to be identified was through the lamp. The lamp was placed 
near their face and the light the fire would light up their face and the groom would say oh that's one one of the ones who I have invited and this one is not and at this moment my brethren for this woman especially if we don't have the experience and the presence of the Holy Spirit in us it's not possible for us to say that we are Christian it's not enough for us to say that we serve the Lord and that we pray and then we do this and that the only way for us to identify ourselves at this moment is through the Holy Spirit. And so, my brethren, the Holy Spirit needs to be present in our lives. There is a moment in which the groom, he was a groom, but the word says that the heralder, heralder says, here comes the groom, because the the bride of the Lord is, has so much commitment that for the bride is no longer bride. The groom goes back. The groom can break up. But the husband, the commitment, the covenant has already been established. The church of the Lord has made a definition of the Lord. The church of the Lord has already made a decision. We're going to serve the Lord. And what I wait awaits us is an eternity. When the groom arrived, there was that desperation, that questioning, and wait a minute, a lamp is extinguishing, and the one that were foolish, like the Bible says, they said, our oil is, going, is running out, give us a little bit. My brethren, our experience is individual. What the Lord made in my life it's not going to be having no purpose for my wife's life or my children. I would love for it to work that way, but it doesn't work. The experience, the experience you have is your own. So, my brethren, at this moment, the Lord is calling us to make a definition in our spiritual life. While the world is going through this, like we have already mentioned, is going through darkness, which is the moment in which we are, where they don't know what they're doing, they, they are banging their their hair their heads back and forth. The government doesn't know what to do as well. But around the faithful church, there is the presence of the Lord to protect us, to keep us, but also to light up our path. Because the rest of the spiritual gift that we mentioned, the woman that was that had uh, fire on the her lamp that was weak, the word of the Lord the Word of God says that a column of fire would go ahead of us, it would be around our lives, and that column of fire would relight the lamp, uh, the fire of our lamp. So, my brethren, the presence of the Lord at this moment is around us to light up our lives, to protect us, but also to cause us to be identified, and that's what mattered the most. We serve the Lord. But what is in our heart the most, what we desire the most, is to be in eternity. So that when the groom arrives and says, Come to me, blessed my father, receive the inheritance that is already prepared for you. So, my brethren, what we are keeping in our heart is this, and the desire of the Lord is, is nowhere, in, in no way God wants anyone to be left behind. So we, servants of the Lord at this moment, once again, the Lord is coming to show the moment in which we are living, which is a moment of destruction, of defeat, and concern for the world. The world has their promise to leave the world behind, but the faithful world walks from victory to victory and from experience to experience, and we walk with our focus pointing towards uh, in front of us is not to the left or the right, but our lives is directed to the Lord and we walk in a direction that is established, in a secure direction, because the darkness out there, in the name of Jesus, it does not affect us. Let us not be hypocrite and say that everything is wonderful. Not at all. The servants go through the trials. I have my trials. I know that the brother and sister have their own trials. 
But our experience is that even in our trial, even in our difficulty, the Lord is with us. So then we walk on the path, the right path, a path that will lead to victories, a path where the light to light up is ahead of us, but is also a light to light up our lives. And that's what the Lord wants to do for us tonight. So my brother, be vigilant. This is a moment of, of vigilance. The Lord is, sh if the Lord is showing sp the spiritual gift, it's not only because the Lord wants to deal with this sister, but the Lord wants to deal with each one of us. Because uh, as I mentioned, the desire of the Lord is that He wants to be with us in eternity. He's, the desire of the Lord is not anyone to be left behind. Like uh, in the story of the people in Egypt, is that not even a nail will be left behind in Egypt. The desire of the Lord that all of us, without exception, we all go to it, to the eternity, because there will be no greater joy, not only for us, but for the Lord, because we, who get, have given proper worth to the sacrifice of Jesus, so we need to be vigilant, because we don't know if it will be right now, or if it will be after this pandemic, we don't know. But what matters for us is not the day or the hour. What matters for us is that we are prepared, so that when Jesus comes, and the Holy Spirit says, here comes a groom, we need to go towards him. There are two proclamations, the groom is here, go towards him. So then the church will be taken away to the clouds and we'll be in our eternity with the Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless the brethren. May us.
Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. My brethren, the Lord also has shown in a vision a woman that has not realized about this moment. Another woman. The vision was showing that like if you, she was shackled in a very dark place and she was not able to see, she didn't realize that in the location where she was and she was living her life normally, doing her chores normally, like nothing would hinder her or darkness. However, the vision says that a light would shine upon her life in the same way as the light shone in the life of Paul. And she was able to see her situation. She was awoken to the situation in which she was shackled in a dark place. And that would cause her to then to plead to the Lord so that the Lord would deliver her. And obviously, because the infinite mercy of the Lord, the Lord would give this blessing of in deliverance. So, my brethren, this moment it's a moment of darkness, the chain, and what is trapping this sister, this person, is trapping her to the her habits and the sin and to her life. As if what we said when we were praying for the uh, in the prophetic service for for the service, there was a dark cloud that was upon the world. And their eyes are covered, and they live a normal life. We have seen all the signs. We saw uh, this last week. Uh, we saw another proclamation of, of the gospel. There's nothing clearer than that. But people continue living their lives normally. The best them be them in the Lord, because the Lord wants to give a deliverance to, the, to this person, and we have already been delivered. So, if there is anything that may be hindering a, a spiritual life of anyone here, the light of, of the Lord come up, comes upon us and give us deliverance. The Lord not only wants to deliver this woman, but to all the ones who need this blessing. So, we're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord, because it was through the sacrifice of Jesus that today we can say that we are free, we have been delivered. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, we praise you this moment. We praise you, Father, because you have helped us to this day that you have sustained us in your holy presence. You have not allowed that the adversities would let us go astray from your presence. But every day you have visited us, visited us with your love, with your grace, has spoken to our hearts. Lord, because every word that we hear, every service that we participate in, we have made yourself present every day, visiting our lives in a special way. That's why, Lord, we surrender to you our gratitude and our praise, Lord, for everything that you have done on behalf of your people, on behalf of your church, because nothing from the part of the Lord, we have not lacked anything from you, Lord, we just need to open up our lips with all our gratitude and everything that you have done, Lord, because in truth, we, have, we don't have enough words to thank you, Lord, because we have many reasons to glorify your name, Lord, especially, Lord, for our lives that you have preserved in your holy presence, Lord. You have allowed us not to look to the left or to the right, Lord, but we have uh, taught us, Lord, that it's best to look to above where our help will come from. Yes, why we praise you, Lord, and raise your name high up in the name of Jesus. Amen. Pastor Sabado, you can, you can close the service. Remember, the ones who can would like to invite you to stand up. We're going to finish the service glorifying the Lord. And our Father wants once again to glorify your name and praise you because preserve the Lord, preserve the Lord in your presence, 
have not let the oil upon our lamps in the presence of the Holy Spirit as being present in our lives, in our homes, or with our family members. We just want to thank you, Lord, and praise the Lord for all things. And please, Lord, that you may receive our service of adoration to you, and you may come to your throne as a sweet smell to you, the offering of your people, who pray in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be upon the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen, Amen. Service is over. I'd like to remember that you need to pray for uh, our brother and his wife, Clay, in, in Port St. Lucie. So that they meet the target of our prayer, the moment in which they are going through, so that everything may go according to the plan of God, and in everything, the name of the Lord may be glorified. Amen. I'd like to remind the brethren that the many days we have transmission of services every day from Brazil on YouTube. Uh, I'd like to invite everybody to participate. If you now want to greet one another, just open up your microphone and let us greet everyone. Amen. Peace of the Lord Jesus. Jesus, amen. Peace of the Lord. Senhor, 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 Senhor,